So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about creating tech packs and all the tech packs we've created so far have been in Illustrator. But a lot of people create their tech packs in Excel. And real talk, that's probably the more efficient way to do it, especially once you get to adding information in a BOM and adding information for your spec sheets. Now, are you drawing in Excel? Of course you're not. You're still drawing your sketches in Illustrator. You might even be creating your callouts there as well. I know I still like to do that. However, once you've completed those sketches, you're gonna take them and you're gonna bring them into Excel. Now, if you've never used Excel or you have very limited experience with it, don't worry about it. I'm gonna take you through kind of like a little crash course on how to use the program for what we're doing. And then two other things you wanna note. One, if you don't have access to Excel, you can also use Google Sheets or you can use Numbers, both are free programs. And the other thing is I am on a Mac and I'm also using an older version of Excel. If you're on a PC or you're using the newer versions of Excel, it may look slightly different, but all of the information should still apply. So, you ready to get started? I'm going to start by opening my Excel Tech Pack template. And you can also download this for free using the link in the description. Let's go through some basics first. The first thing to notice are the tabs across the bottom. Each represents a separate page in the Tech Pack and can be accessed just by clicking on them. Each of the small boxes on the page are called cells. And if you click in a cell, you can type information into it. If you plan to add information to a cell that already has text in it, make sure that when you click on the cell, you look at the formula bar to make sure there's text in that box. If there isn't, that means you're in the wrong cell. This can happen sometimes if the text is longer than the width of the cell, so be sure to look out for that. The standard toolbar across the top of the page gives you quick access to some common functions. New file, open, save, print, copy, paste. Right under that is the formatting toolbar, which allows you to choose your font and format it. Within the ribbon, you'll see this info again, along with an icon to add or remove grid lines on a cell, meaning put lines around the rectangle. Fill the cell with a color if you want to highlight or color code your document and change the font color. You can also change the alignment within the cell. So similar to changing the justification of a paragraph, like centered, left, or right, you could also change the justification or alignment within each cell, having your text closer to the top, bottom, left, right, or center. There's also an option to wrap your text so that instead of it going into another cell, if there's not enough space, it will wrap to the next line to fit into the cell width. And if you just need to make a cell wider or taller, Move your cursor near the edge of the letter or number that will increase the size. Press and hold your mouse button and drag the cursor. All of those toolbars usually appear when you start the program, but if they don't, go to the view menu to show them. Let's go ahead and start adding some information. I'm going to add text first before I add any pictures and I wanna add my info to the existing text in the cell. So I'll double click the cell, recheck that the existing text is showing in the formula bar and start typing my information. The next thing I'm going to do is add my logo in the upper right corner. And there's two ways you could add a picture. I'll show you the traditional way with my logo and then I'll show you a trick which I actually learned from another awesome YouTuber, So Heidi, with the sketches. My logo is already saved as a ping file, so to add it, all I'm going to do is go to Insert, Photo, Picture from File. You can also just drag it onto your page. Grab a corner to resize the logo and be sure to hold the Shift key while you're dragging to ensure it scales proportionally and you don't distort the shape of your logo. To add a sketch, I'm going to use a copy and paste trick. First, take a snapshot of the sketch. On a Mac, you can do this by pressing Command, Shift, 4. A cursor will appear and you can make a box around whatever you want to snapshot. 
But before you let go of the cursor, press your control key. Switch to Excel, paste it, and your snapshot appears on the page. Resize it as you did the logo and you're ready to go. If you're on a PC, you can use the snipping tool or the newer version, Snip and Sketch, and it works the exact same way except you don't have to hold the control key. Now, I really love this shortcut, but if I have a lot of pages that need to go into my tech pack, like when I'm working on technical outerwear, I will sometimes export them all at once as ping files and then drag them into Excel. In Illustrator, I resize the pages first so that each page is the size of the sketch and callout if there is one. And a simple way to do this is to select the sketch, switch to the artboard tool, and in the control panel or the properties panel, change the artboard size to fit to selected art. Once you've done that for all of your artboards, go to File, Export, Export As, and choose a format, which I would suggest to be Ping or JPEG. I prefer to export as Ping files because I always feel they come out clearer, especially the text. And you're able to create a transparent background, which I've needed a few times, instead of just having a white background. Underneath that, make sure you choose the option to use artboards and be sure all is selected or type in the page number if you only want to export specific sketches. The next window will give you options for the type of file you've chosen to export. If you've chosen to export as a JPEG, the color model will default to whatever your file is and you can drag the quality slider all the way to 10, which will create a slightly larger but better looking file. In your options, keep the compression method on baseline standard, then choose a resolution. Keep in mind that a higher resolution will give you a larger file, which will ultimately increase the file size of your Excel document. So you don't wanna make it larger than it really needs to be. For the purposes of a tech pack that will probably only get printed on letter or A4 paper or viewed on a screen, 150 to 200 PPI is all you really need. The anti-aliasing helps to soften the look of your sketch or text when it's saved so the edges don't look so sharp or crisp. If this is not something you want, choose none. Otherwise, you can choose between Art Optimize, which is my usual choice, or Type Optimize. For a ping file, you have similar options. Again, choose a resolution between 150 and 200 PPI. Choose your anti-aliasing option and you can leave interlace checked. And here's where you can decide if you want a white or transparent background. Once you hit okay, Illustrator will export all of your pictures at one time and you can drag them into Excel as needed. So you're basically doing all the same things that we talked about in the last two videos. For the cover, design details, and design measurements pages, you're adding a picture. And for the stitch reference, BOM, and spec pages, you're filling out charts. One thing to note, you can add your callouts in Excel if you want to. My preference is Illustrator just because it's easier for me, but adding them in Excel is pretty simple as well. To do this, you'll just need to add a text box. Click and drag to make the box as large as you want, and then start typing once you let go of your mouse. And to add the arrows, bring up your media browser and choose shapes. Choose the solid line, single or double-sided arrow line, and then click and drag to draw. Once you make your line, options appear in the ribbon section to allow you to customize the look of the line you drew. If you're using my Excel Tech Pack template, a few great things to note are, one, it can be used in Google Sheets, Numbers, and newer versions of Excel on a Mac or a PC. Two, the header populates on all pages, so you'll only need to fill out the basic information on the cover page, and it'll carry over to the other pages in the tech pack. And three, your spec descriptions on the sample spec sheet will also carry over to the graded spec. So again, you only need to type out your spec descriptions once. Super helpful and a big time saver.
Remember to check the description for a link to both the Illustrator and Excel Tech Pack templates. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.